Hi, and welcome to the Saved by Grace and the Kingdom Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Sylvia Puentes. And I'm your co-host, Steve Hopper. And we've combined forces to bring you stories of hope, restoration, and God's faithful love. And to feature influencers who are using their platforms to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Please like, share, and subscribe. And welcome to the show. Hi, my name is Sylvia Puentes, and I am your host, and I'm here with my co-host, author, speaker, and coach, Steve Hopper. Hey, everybody. And we'd like to welcome you to the show. Today, we have a very special guest. We're excited to have singer, songwriter, speaker, author, Stephen McWhorter. Stephen, welcome to the show. If you got baker, candlestick maker, (laughs) you've got all the other stuff. (laughs) Okay. Good to be with you guys. It'll be fun. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, Stephen, um, I don't. I don't even know where to start. I'm. Um, I first um, found you on Instagram and YouTube through a little old song called "Come Jesus Come," <laughs> <laughs> and um, that song we know um, had about sixty million views um on on the Crazy. internet um yeah. yeah for anyone listening stick around because we're going to play that song for you guys at the end um but steven le- why don't you tell us what led you to write that song and um and more about what sure. you're doing yeah you know um it, uh, this first of all uh i'll never get tired of thanking the lord for the song uh, at the time of us actually recording this podcast, it's, uh, what is it, March 14th? Tomorrow, C.C. Winan releases her version of Come Jesus Come. Wow. So it's really interesting how the Lord's just breathed on a song. It's not even about me. It's about, um, as I'll tell you, it's about really aligning yourself with something that is clearly the heart of God, you know? Not just writing songs because you think it'll be a hit or whatever, but... Uh, it was the beginning of the pandemic, and I was home at my my uh, where I'm sitting now, actually, at my keyboard and uh, my piano, and I had my Bible open, and I was just trying to really worship Jesus and mean it. And I was at the Book of Revelation, I had my Bible open, right, um, in the last chapter of Revelation. And if you've ever read like something many times, you know, in the Bible. And you've read like a verse many times or whatever. There's just one time where you read it. It's like you've never read it before. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, how did I miss yeah. that? And um, when I read Revelation 22, 17, it says, the spirit and the bride says, come. I was like, wait a minute. The spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of the living God is saying, Jesus, come. And I realized in that moment, you know, it also says the bride, the spirit and the bride, the bride, that's the church. That's you and I We're we're called to join in with this thing that is clearly something that the Lord wants, right? And uh, I realized in that moment, I wanted to love people better towards his return. I wanted to build things that mattered more towards his return. Um, not just build my platform, but build his kingdom right through my life. And uh, as I started to look more into in the Gospels and in, in, in the New Testament, just looking into the return of Jesus more, because I kind of look, I always kind of looked at the return of Jesus like, uh, you know, those people in the corners with the, with the signs that say the end is nigh. Like, it's like kind of just this weird thing. But uh, I didn't realize just how important it is to the heart of God to actually want this, you know, uh, to desire this thing that he desires. And as I looked into the New Testament more, I saw where the disciples and these guys that wrote about it, they talked about the cross and referenced the cross around uh, 48 times which is a lot and, and thank you jesus for the cross right but uh they referenced the return of christ 318 times it's a lot more and when i think about that i'm like wait a minute that's crazy and i think the reason and again there are so many smarter people out there theologians and people that have written books about the return of jesus they they know a lot more about this than me but these guys, the, the the disciples, they they knew Jesus, right? And they longed to see their friend again, right? And when they write stuff, when Paul even writes stuff like, you know, uh, we're not in Philippians 3.20, we're no longer citizens of this world, but we're citizens in heaven. And we 
eagerly anticipate the return of our Lord, right? Um, they long to see their friend again. And I want to long to see Jesus, right? That was the idea. And I want to long to see my king and really mean it. And so that was really how the song got birthed. And then when we put the song out on like, you know, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all that, of course, it went viral. Uh, I Again, I believe it's because uh, we, you know, we were singing, I was singing something that is the heart of God, not just a good idea, right? And we started seeing, we started going live and we would worship Jesus and share the gospel, share my testimony. And we'd ask people if they want to give their life to Christ. And again, remember, this is all because of a stirring and a longing for Jesus to return, right? Um, ever since 2022 till today, uh, September of 2022 till today, on these live streams, we've seen over 38,000 people come to Christ. Wow. And all this comes back, yeah, it's a song, that's great. But I'm convinced that when you align your life with something that in his word he's made clear isn't just like a good idea or it's good behavior, but it's like it's something he's very clearly wants, something his spirit is saying, like, come, Jesus. That's very clearly something he wants. When you align yourself with something like that, uh, you're going to see the kingdom. I believe you'll see the kingdom of God advance through your life in a way that's beyond a business or a brand or or uh, a, a church, air quotes, small church, you know what I mean? Like a yeah, building, yeah. but but it's bigger. It's the kingdom of God advancing in this huge revival, awakening kind of way. So pretty cool. Yeah, it's super cool, man. And, you know, uh, Come Jesus Come obviously is already, uh, you know, as you mentioned, it's having such a huge impact. And, and it's the song that went viral. And it's, uh, it's the one that put, put you on the map, but it also, you know, in a big way, but it also put, put Jesus on the map in front of a bunch of people that didn't know who Jesus was, man. And, and that's the most powerful thing about it. Now you, you also uh, have a new song that just came out, which is personally my favorite. I want to address it right off the bat, right? Which is my life is proof. And man, let me tell you something. When I heard that song for the first time, I was like, Oh my goodness. Because that song spoke to me, bro. And obviously it's, you know, that song is is your is is a representation of your testimony, man, because your life yeah. is proof. Tell everybody why your life is such proof I of Jesus' so. love. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah uh, I hope so. That's the plan, right? Uh yeah. Uh, for, for me, that song was really birthed out of my testimony. You know, I was raised an evangelist son. My dad was a traveling evangelist, and I'd see him get up and preach about Jesus. But behind closed doors, I would watch him physically abuse my mom. And so at a very young age, I said, if God's real, he's not good. I don't want anything to do with this Jesus guy. And that was, you know, the my earthly father and my heavenly father at a very young age became the villains in my story, right? And... I just remembered, you know, at like 11 years old, I started, you know, smoking and drinking and marijuana and that kind of stuff. By the time I was 15, it was cocaine, pills. I'm, I'm selling drugs. By the time I'm 17, I'm a full out crystal meth addict. I'm using every day for over six years. And during this time of my life, I'm the guy who hates Christianity. Like, Two things are going to happen. Uh, if you mentioned Jesus around me, I was either going to cuss you out or try to knock you out, right? I was... I was pretty violent about it and pretty, pretty, uh, pretty crazy about it. But um, there were people. I always say, say this: there were people that were praying for me, like really praying for me, interceding for me. Um, you know, emotionally would just feel led to just in tears pray for me. And uh, that's the Holy Spirit, by the way. If you ever feel like that, if that's going on, that's the Holy Spirit. He's wooing you to intercede on behalf of that person. Pay attention to that. Um, that's important, but you know, God was after me, right? Somebody came and gave me this book called the case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Uh, have you guys heard of this book? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? But Lee's now a friend of mine, which is crazy to say, uh, when I think about my story, it's just bonkers. But when they offered me this book, this is probably the most miraculous part of the story because I didn't like cuss them out. You know what I mean? Uh, I was like, cool, whatever. And just, just like a blur. I just accepted the book. And I don't know if it was like what it was out of boredom. 
Uh, I'm sure it was the Lord, but it was like I'm in this room at three o'clock in the morning. and I'm just reading this this book. And I literally have drugs on the side table next to me, you know, a uh, cigarette burning in the ashtray. I'm just sitting in this room reading this reading this book and nobody's playing music, creating an atmosphere in the corner, right? It's just uh, seemingly the most impossible place for someone to get saved, but it's the kindness of a very real God to meet a wounded pastor's kid in a place like this. And I just remembered uh, being like, God, oh my gosh, you're real, I get it. And I wanna give you my life. I wanna quit all these things that have just uh, just haunted me for so long, all this addiction, all this darkness, all this anger. Uh, I want to, but there's no way I can do this because at this point, you know, I'd been in addiction for over 11 years. Uh, I couldn't even imagine being anyone other than the person I'd known for so long, right? Uh, all my life was built around this thing of just garbage, really. But, you know, addiction, just the whole thing. My, my life was was really just built around it and so when i was like god i can't there's no way i just remember the holy spirit being like in a thought more powerful than words like i know it wasn't me just being like steven you won't do it i'll do it mm. and this is that like ephesians 2 i think it's 8 it says you're saved by grace this isn't something you can boast about but a work of god yeah. and in that moment I believe that I, like I took him at his word. I believe here right now, like this chair that I'm sitting in, I hope holds me up and, and I, I believed and gave my life to Christ in that moment. I went from addiction to redemption, uh, from meth addict to worship leader, like a year later. But, um, it really was like only God could have done that. So when I say my life is proof, I mean it because where I am today versus where I was 20 years ago, uh, there, if you knew me and then you, there was no, all of a sudden Steven's got willpower. Uh, there was just like, you know, there was no, all of a sudden Steven's just strong enough to quit everything. I mean, that's insane. Um, you know, I quit smoking cigarettes. If you've ever been to an AA meeting, maybe nobody's drinking, but I promise you everybody's smoking. So forget about the mess. Forget about all that stuff. I quit smoking cigarettes. I was smoking two packs a day. I, that's insane to me. Uh, do it for 11 years. But, you know, I tell that and I say that, and some people might go, man, that's discouraging because, um, you know, it doesn't work like that for me. Uh, it feels like I'm still trying to do this, you know. Uh, I'll just say that in the gospel, Jesus never healed any way the same way twice uh, because every story has a purpose and your story is important. And if it takes you five times, if it takes 11 times and you fall at the feet of Jesus and you give him your life, your story is important. The Lord's going to use it to draw many to him. That's the beautiful thing about a testimony because in Hebrew, the word testimony literally means do it again story. Uh, so it's almost like when you share your testimony, it's like the Lord is saying through you to whoever's listening, I want to do it again. And I want to do it again with you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's wow. <laughs> you know, Stephen, when you, as you share your testimony, um, I can see how, and what happened to you happens to so many people. I know that it happened to me. And I believe that it happened to Steve. Um, the enemy will sure. take our experience with our earthly father. Um, you know, our relationship with our earthly father or the lack of relationship with our earthly father. And basically try to tell us that that's the kind of father that God is. Um, I want to yeah. preface also by saying that, you know, when I mention the enemy or we talk about him, it's not to give him a platform ever, but just to shed light sure. and expose him. Um, and we can see how he, at an early age, came in to just plant that seed or that thought in you that, uh, that your earthly dad and your father in heaven were basically the right. same thing. That's where mm -hmm. the, you know, because if he can get us to separate from our relationship with God, mm. that's, you know, he, he can, he can infiltrate our lives. He can, you didn't see yourself, sure. um, you didn't know your identity outside of using drugs. So, and again, he caused that separation between you and God. So there was no way that you could 
until God came and the Holy Spirit intervened, know that you have an identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And, you know, I, I think as well, man, as I look at your story and I listen to your story, the, the, the enemy used, the enemy used so many different things in your life to pretend to, to, to keep you from stepping into that gift that he had for you. The gift right. that God had given you, man. And, and I'm telling you, when when you listen to your voice and, 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 and not just your voice, but the words, man, you know, the, the, you know, revelation 12, 11, which is one of my favorite scriptures of all time is ultimately, you know, that they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and your songs, every single one of them that I've listened to is a testimony, man. It's, 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 but it's, it's not just a testimony. The way God has gifted you in delivering that testimony in such a way, you know, music's a powerful thing. Obviously we know that, right? Uh, you, sure. it, it, it can penetrate us, man, at a level that like nothing else can. And, and just to see how the enemy just worked in your life, you know, in so many different situations to try to steal that gift from you. But God, man, he was there. And, 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 and ultimately, you know, I, you said something that, that I wrote down cause it was so powerful. You know, you said, this is all I've ever been. And, you know, Sylvia brought up identity, bro. But when you called out to him, when you called right. out to him, he he gave you a new identity, bro. And you've been walking in it. And it's impacting the world, bro. It's impacting the kingdom in such a powerful way. What does that uh, feel? I'm praying that, I'm praying that is the case. Uh, you know, it's um, it's pretty crazy. No, it is the case, bro. It, listen, it is the case. Like it's happening right now. Thirty-eight thousand people have already come to know the Lord, bro, because you're walking sure. in His will for your life. Like it's already happened. What does that feel like for you, man? To know that God is using you in such a mighty way, bro, that you're out there influencing people and the kingdom so much. Yeah, yeah I. I don't know that I thought about it. I I, I just kind of feel like I'm, uh, I just feel like I'm strapped to a rocket right now with the Holy Spirit. And I don't have a lot of time to like sit and dwell. Don't get me wrong. My wife and I stop and go, wow, this is awesome what God's doing, you know? And, yeah. uh, but, but it's, uh, it's been pretty busy. I, you know, I think, um, I think my wife and I would both agree. We probably need like an actual vacation where we just get away. <laughs> and like, just like, thank the lord for what he's done you know um but uh yeah but we're aware and we're grateful and i'm humbled because i don't just say that like it's a you know it's a thing to say i mean it's gen genuinely humbling because you don't you know you don't feel like you're i don't know you don't feel like you're i i don't feel like i'm some big deal or that there's anything going on i'm just i'm in my basement you know i'm just <laughs> I'm still what the Lord's calling me to do. And you clock in, you clock out. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, we tour, we see things. It's amazing what God, did. we were just with Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir this weekend. It's just crazy what God's doing and all that's great. But, you know, I come into a studio, I sit down, I partner with the Lord. We make videos and content that we put out and just trust the Lord to use that we pray draws people to him. And, you know, just clock in at nine, clock out at five, be a husband, be a dad. That's not, it's, it's really, it's really that, that's it, you know? Uh, and then you sit back and you go, okay, Lord, use it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Powerful. Powerful. Your, uh, your life first, man, Zephaniah. Oh, uh, is it Zephaniah 317? It was, but I would say if I, you were to ask me now what it is, I would say it's, uh, I would say it's, uh, I think I would say it's Philippians 213, uh, which says it's God in you, giving you the desires and the power to do the things that please him. Um, the reason I would say it's that is because that is filled with so much grace. Um, I, I, Sometimes you feel like I need to have the want to to do it. Like, 
my motives better be perfect for God to use me or you know what I'm saying? This yeah. verse literally yeah. is saying it's God in you giving you desires, the want to that you don't have yet. <laughs> right. It's yeah. God in you, giving you desire and the power. That's the ability, the, the strength, the capability to even do the thing you can't do without him. And that is so drenched in grace to me. Because there are some times, man, where I get up on a piano in front of people and I lead worship and I was in a bad mood before I got up there. And then all these people get saved and I go, that makes no sense. (laughs) 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 That shouldn't work like that. And God's like, it's me doing it, not you. Uh, And it's different if my heart, you know, even though I'm not perfect, my heart's in the right place. I am like, I do what what he wants. You know what I mean? I want what he wants for my life. But there's just so much grace. Um in that verse for me, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. You know, Stephen, I was going to say that um, I don't know if you've ever said this to the Lord, but I could see that your heart aches for what his heart aches and, or for what aches his heart, your heart aches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know that I've said that exactly like that, but I've definitely said I want to want what you want. (laughs) That is like so convoluted sounding, but it's super honest. I want want what you want more than anything else, right? Yeah. Uh, To pray that, I want to want you more than anything else. And some days I do. Some days this world we live in creeps in and I forget, right, what's important, just like anybody else. But at the end of the day, I'm aware that I have to say, God, I want to want you more than anything else. That, again, comes back to that Philippians, you know, uh, 2.13. It's God in you, giving you desire that you don't have yet. He has it, right, in you, the desire and the power to do the things that please him, that bring him glory, that bring him honor, right? Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Stephen, obviously your your story, your testimony, uh, you know, speaks uh, to God's grace, right? His grace, his love for us, uh, his undying uh, love, for us is unconditional love for us, no matter what, no matter what we do, no matter what choices we make and your walk, your journey now is, is, is influencing people. You are a kingdom influencer. What would you say to the people out there that are listening right now that Mm -hmm. first and foremost, don't know who Jesus is. And secondly, for the people that do know who Jesus is, but they haven't yet stepped into that role of being an influencer for the kingdom. So first one would be, what do you say to the people that don't know who Jesus is? And what do you say to the people who know who Jesus is, but they just haven't really surrendered yet and become that person that's out there influencing for the kingdom? That was a long question, but I think I got it. Okay, so, good. Here's the thing. <laughs> I was trying to go. I, trying to, I felt like I was doing math there for a minute. Yeah. Uh, I, I, for somebody, if you're on here right now and you don't know Jesus and you're listening to my voice, first off, I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. That's got to be the Lord. Uh, so <laughs> if you are listening to this, uh, the question I would ask is very simple, and I believe it's the one that Jesus would ask too. And it's, do you want to know what you look like fully alive, like the real you? Um, this thing called the gospel, the Bible, you know, in it, the whole point of this story of the gospel is found in this verse that John three sixteen, which you see a lot of places. It's famous verse, even for people that don't know the Bible. And it's the verses, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him won't perish, but have everlasting. This is key life everlasting life and in john 10 10 in the bible it's jesus says i've come that they you and i might have life and life to the full the gospel has like a goal 
um, like a mark it's trying to hit. And it's you alive. It's you free from addiction. It's you free from suicide. It's you free from, from despair. It's the real you. And you may say, I've lived all this life. You're not going to trick me into believing I'm someone I'm not. I'm just going to tell you from someone that knows, looking back 20 years later, you can't know who you really are until you give your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the pretty simple thing is right now to say, God, if you're real, I need to know it. You know, uh, I want to know it. You know, I want to know Jesus. If you really are Lord, I want to know it. And I want to believe um, because I want to be alive. I want to be fully alive. So that's what I would say to somebody that's maybe not a believer and listening right now. If you are a believer, I would say the same thing. <laughs> Do you want to know what you look like fully alive in Jesus? Like you're not meant to settle. You're not meant, and I'm not talking about health and wealth. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about real life. Um, he is the source and you are dearly loved by him. And he lives in you and dwells in you. The one whose very name and source is life. And you, you don't have to. You, you could be a believer and be struggling with addiction. You could be a believer and be struggling with all kinds of things. Um, and I would just say, turn to the one who's Jesus, the one who is life. And that Philippians 2.13, for God, it's you. I want you. I want the desires that you have for my life. I want to desire those things more than anything else. And I want your power in me to make me more like you here now, because I want to be alive. I want to be fully alive. Amen. You know, for anyone uh, listening who is, is questioning or who thinks that maybe if God does exist, he's not He's not such a good God. Um, I know that's where I was. Steven, that's where you were. And um, our other Steve here, <laughs> we've, all, we've all had that thought and we've all called out to him. Um, I want to say, you know, the goal of the cross was to be reconciled. Mm. He, he left his kingdom to come here to take on everything that belonged to us. Because he loves you so much that he said, no, I'm going down there because I want to reconcile. I want relationship. I want to draw Sylvia back to me. I want to draw Stephen back to me. I want to draw Steve back to me. So I want to leave um, our listeners with this message, and then you guys can can add whatever message you, you guys want to leave the listeners with. But um, he loves you so much that it doesn't matter what you've done, the path that you've taken, how far away you think you may be. You don't have to clean yourself up, uh, clean yourself up first. All you have to do is call on his name, is ask him to reveal himself to you. God, if you're real, that's, that's the way I did it. That's the way Stephen did it. Um, God, if you're real, I want to know you. And it's that overwhelming, everlasting love that he says, here I am. Your life will be transformed. One moment in his presence, however your encounter with him looks, will transform your life, will affirm your identity in him, and will show you that you were created with a perfect plan and a purpose. Stephen, I always ask the Lord to impress a scripture on my heart for the guests that come on the show. And um, he gave me uh, one for you that, um, that as we see the layout of your testimony, it seems pretty obvious. And you, you mentioned part of it just a few minutes ago, and it's John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life more abundant. And as we look at your testimony, Stephen, we can see that the enemy knew the plans that God had for you, the gift that he had given you, the fact that 
a song that he would drop into your spirit would um, get 60 million likes that um, 38,000 people who didn't know him would come to know him and their lives would be eternally changed. So he came to steal your identity, to kill you and totally destroy the plans and the purpose that God had for you. But Jesus yeah. came that you may have life and have it more abundant. Mm. That's great. Yeah. Steven, you want to say anything else before we, uh, before we cut you loose so you can go back out there and <laughs> sing some more of those beautiful songs? I feel like I've said enough. You guys are good. You say whatever you want to say. We're All good. right. Good deal. <laughs> well, you. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, you know, I'm going to, I want to close out with this, you know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to reference my favorite song again. My life is proof, you know, uh, Steven, right you're, 2024. yeah, Steven, your life, <laughs> your life is proof, man. And Sylvia, your life is proof and my life is proof. And if you're listening to this today, go let your life be proof that God is alive. Yeah. And that he loves us. Don't go anywhere, everybody, because we're going to play Come Jesus Come. Steve, thank you so much for being here today, man. We love you. God bless you, man. We're going to be constantly praying for you and your journey, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day. Sometimes I I'm holding on to hope that won't fade. Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long for the day you return to heal every hurt and right every Tommy